Though the rustling in the trees when you think you're alone in the woods. Though the dark shapes moving underwater that you swear was just a trick of the eye. They couldn't be real, right? They're called cryptids, fantastical creatures roaming the wilderness whose existence can't be proven. But it can't be disproven either. Scotland has the Loch Ness Monster. West Virginia, the Mothman. Bigfoot? Okay, well, everyone's got a Bigfoot. It won't come as much of a surprise then that Indiana has a few cryptids of its own. But which ones? And where do these legends come from? Today on Indie Android. Technically speaking, a cryptid is any creature or animal that uh, the existence of which is in question or it cannot be proven. Meet historian Lindsay Beckley with the Indiana Historical Bureau. She spent a fair share of time looking into Indiana's cryptids and the urban legends behind them. A region's cryptids can say a lot about that place. What scares them, what they find mysterious or intriguing. And cryptids are everywhere. Even Beckley's small 1200 population hometown has a Bigfoot hunting club. Okay, but everyone has a Bigfoot. What does Indiana have? For one, a massive gorilla sloth hybrid supposedly wandering Boonville around 1937. It was described as a monster hairy ape, a giant sloth, and a cross between an ape and a sloth. So this was a tried and true actual cryptid that they weren't sure what the origin of it. They theorized that it could have been a Neolithic uh, giant sloth uh, that had just eluded capture for all these years. So attempt to capture it, they did. For a few weeks, the town would put out bait and set traps, hoping to nab the prehistoric beast. It's not the only time to do so, but we'll come back to that. Mothers were keeping their children inside. People weren't going outside after dark. The theory goes that local landowners started the rumor to keep people from stealing their blackberry crops. Feels like kind of a cop-out, but believe what you want. Maybe put up a fence or, <laughs> or something, maybe a no trespassing sign before you jump straight to giant sloth. Next, let's take a trip down to the southern tip of Indiana for something skulking just under the surface of the Ohio River, the Vive Mud Mermaids. Sightings for these cuties date way back to the 1890s. There were said to be two, a male and a female. The description of the mud mermaids is kind of distinctive. The beast is about five feet in length. Its general color is yellowish. The body between the four legs resembles that of a human being. Back of its hind legs, it tapers to a point. The extremities resemble hands and are webbed and furnished with sharp claws. It is devoid of hair. Its ears are sharp pointed and stand up like those of a dog. I don't think that you're confusing any sort of fish or, I don't know, large snake with that. Beckley says the mermaids were only discussed in the local news for a couple months before they vanished from the conversation completely. But even those detailed descriptions should be taken with a grain of salt. Sometimes if you're making things up, you might make up a lot more detail to, to kind of draw readers in, especially 1894 is kind of at the peak of yellow journalism. You're trying to get as many readers as possible, whether you're being ethical about that or not. But not all of the state's cryptids are fun campfire fare. Some ask us to look at the reasons why these kinds of legends get shared in the first place, like the Michigan City Wild Child. The one in Michigan City was first spotted in 1839. It was a small child between the ages of seven and 10, and uh, apparently it just had hair all over it. After all is said and done, there might actually be an explanation for this one, racism. This specific newspaper that I was reading put forth the idea that perhaps it was the child of an immigrant who had escaped its parents and become kind of feral. A lot of times throughout the reading of these articles, you can kind of see other influences like xenophobia or fear of mental illness, things like that coming through it. Some of the other stories ended in the search parties finding a homeless person or uh, a person that had uh, mental illness and just weren't taking care of themselves or were living off the land because they couldn't live any other way. Always keep that in mind that the social context in which these stories are taking place is more than just, oh, 300 people went out looking for a giant ape and uh, sometimes that giant ape turns out to be something much sadder than, than what you might think. There are very few things left in the world that are unexplainable or that are left to be discovered. So it, it's something for us to, to wonder about and to, to try to explore. I think that we've gotten smaller and smaller and, and things to conquer until we've, uh, we've come to cryptids.
If you've been playing along at home, there's still one big cryptid we haven't looked at yet. Probably Indiana's most famous cryptid. It's kind of the most thoroughly reported on and reports last for years. The one that's still talked about to this day. They said it was as big as a kitchen table. Or as big as the top of a car. The one with really strong branding? We're talking, of course, about the Beast of Busco, but to do that, we'll have to get a bit closer. We're going on a turtle hunt, next time on Indie Android.